This is a Play Art Corvette Stingray. And since my grandkids may be watching this video, it's Kaka Brown. Uh, it's obviously well played with. Um, that is the color of that casting. No one has changed that color. That's apparently factory issue. Um, I don't know what they were thinking. There are so many better colors you can use on a Corvette. But that's the way this one is. <laughs> and, uh, it's not staying that color. That's for certain. So this was one of those builds that just fights you every step of the way. I couldn't even get the punch to, to settle down to make a mark so I could draw it, draw out the posts. I had to file them down a little bit first because they were really rounded posts on this thing. It has an all metal base. And uh, so once I filed them down a little bit, then at least I was able to get the punch to sit still. And you know, admittedly, I'm not as good at these things as a lot of other people. You know, I a lot of this is new to me, so getting that punch to sit still wasn't uh, easy. But I finally got the marks there that I needed and uh, was able to drill out the posts, tap the posts the way I needed to, and uh, get that thing apart. You can see there, those the wheels are not good looking on this thing. And I'm sure some of you right now are screaming at me doing it th this in my hand, but I'm comfortable this way. Uh, it works for me. I have better control of it doing it this way. I don't draw it out very fast. I just take my time. Uh, the drill, if anybody's looking for a drill to use, I highly recommend that Bosch drill. It's, it's a small drill. It's very easy to hold. Uh, and you have a lot of control over it. I tried doing this with a DeWalt earlier with a really large battery pack on it, and it was just too too clumsy for me, too awkward. Uh, I didn't have the control over it that I do with this one. This one is truly like a pistol in a way because the battery fits inside the handle itself, inside the pistol grip of the drill. It's not hanging off the end. So I finally get it apart. Uh, there you can see it's an all metal base. Uh, there's chrome pieces on the ends for the front and back bumper. Uh, they aren't very fancy. I mean, they have a little bit of detail to them, but uh, that part could have done, been done better. But the casting itself, I think, is excellent. Um, th those do fit in there really snug on the post. They just go over the post themselves. And then the interior is blue plastic with a great big steering wheel on it that comes out. Uh, and then the glass. Obviously, the glass is really tiny on this thing. Uh, there you have the casting. And uh, they did a really good job on the casting. I'm really happy with it. So next, it was time to strip it down. So uh, the, the wheels I had to take off first, and they were in there a little oddly the way they had them in there but you can see there's some casting lines on there that needed to be filed away um, there's the base and uh, so anyhow inside the casting itself I wanted to have the wheel sit in closer to the body inside the wheel wells instead of sticking out the way they did and I wanted to put bigger wheels in there bigger wheels and tires I ended up going with green light wheels uh, yes I put Kragers on here because that's what I do <laughs> um, I think everything looks good with Kragers on it and yeah I don't do them on all the cars but yeah I'm, I'm somewhat reasonable about it but hey I'm, I'm a child of those days so uh, inside the casting there were some large um, kind of blocky areas that we're going to prevent the wheels uh, from being able to fit so busted out the Dremel tool and uh, just uh, ground those out of the inside of the frame um, I need to get a lot more practice with the Dremel tool I'm a lot more comfortable with files and uh, coping saw and a jeweler saw than I am with the Dremel tool I also needed to grind down some posts on the base itself uh, to help the, again, help the wheels and tires fit a little better. 
So it gently went over the frame or over the body where the casting lines were to just get rid of those. Work those away with the file. Just, yeah, you know, very easily going over it. Not wanting to really grind into it. It's just, just uh, getting rid of those, making it a lot more smooth. Just taking my time. I did go over the body with a wire wheel and uh, filed it down, then went over it with steel wool. Got everything as smooth as I could. Smooth where it should be smooth. Kept as much detail as I could, didn't want to lose any detail. And again, this is a really detailed casting. I, I, as you'll see later on, when you get some side views of it after it's painted, they did a very good job on this casting. I, I wish they had uh, made the front bumper and back bumper a little better. But the casting itself is pretty fantastic. So, uh, just took my time. Worked away at this. Checking it as I went, not getting too carried away. The interior I didn't do anything to. I popped the steering wheel out and then just hit it with some gray primer, actually, to me a primer. Left it at that color, didn't change it. Got out the foots polish and worked on the windshield. That windshield, it, it's so <coughs> tiny. You don't realize it until you're starting to do something like this. And uh, I know some of you will use the Dremel tool to polish this stuff. I can't. I'll burn it up. I'll burn a hole in it. I have before. I know I will again if I try it. This, doing it by hand works fine for me. I'm not patient about things, but maybe this is a good way to learn some patience. So after getting it polished, I dipped it in gauzy, you know, wicked off the excess, and then set that aside to dry. Uh, again, that's just so tiny. Uh, this was much easier to work with than uh, one that you'll see on the upcoming Paint It Pink build. The windshield on that fought me. Uh, just because, as, as you'll see when we get to that one, there was nothing to hold. At least on this one, there was something to hold. So cover it up so it doesn't get any little fuzzies on it or anything. And uh, busted out the Molotow pin. Started painting the front and back bumpers. Again, nothing fancy. Uh, at some point, I, I'm going to want to learn to how to recast these things in resin or do something a little different. Uh, because uh, these could have been better. And I'm not sure how I'd approach it, but maybe if I had castings to work with, uh, that would help. But it's, it, they were just kind of awkward little pieces. I don't know, it was probably kind of silly doing them on the helping hands. Seems smart at the time, and then as you're doing it, you're thinking to yourself, why am I just not holding these things? They have the tabs you can hang on to. But I didn't. No, I had to make this uh, as awkward as possible. So uh, I hit it with the metal cast paint base coat. I just spray painted the base black. Uh, went with the metal cast blue paint. This is where I started running into problems. When I did the clear, I, I wasn't patient enough. I didn't wait for that to dry long enough. And so then I started getting some orange peel on it, which was really disappointing. Uh, basically, I wet sanded it down, uh, added some more clear coats, and it was still it was still fighting me. And uh, then online, I was on, uh, I think it was Instagram, and uh, was chatting with Diecast Outcast about it. And he made some suggestions, and uh, I think kind of inspired me to give it another shot. So I wet sanded it again, uh, hit it with more clear coats, and saved it. It did turn out well. I did, I'm, I'm really happy with the paint after all, but... It's funny, when I first hit it with the clear, I, it clouded up and I should have realized there was something going on. But 
you know, you, you learn from these things as you go. It's all a learning experience. So uh, here I am putting it all together. And uh, the base, what I ended up doing on the wheels, just uh, I didn't really mention it earlier, but I, I, I'm I, holding the axles down with actually with some JB Weld. I put tubes in there, put some JB Weld on there to uh, hold them in place, and uh, then put the green light wheels on. And, you know, if there's a way to fumble around with this thing, I, every step of the way on this thing, I was fumbling. So, uh, anyhow, I finally get it all together, believe it or not. And uh, I can't remember. We'll see if I dropped one of the screws or not. It's, it seems like I might have. Maybe not. But uh, at least this part went together well. The wheels roll well it all works well the wheels fit into it you know into the body well so uh no complaints when it's all said and done um i did do a little detailing i, I put uh, you know the tail lights on there i uh, detailed the vents on the side panels of the body uh, did some little things to it uh, but yeah, I I, uh, I am pleased with the results. That you know, towards the end there with the problems with the paint, I was getting ready to throw in the towel. And like I said, I'm not the most patient person, but here's the end result. And uh, gotta love Kragers. <laughs> um, that's how it turned out. Um, I hope you like it. I'm really happy with it. Um, you know, thanks for watching these videos. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, there will be more cars coming along soon. There is the Paint It Pink Challenge that's coming up on October 12th. So uh, that one's a lot of fun. It's a really enjoyable build. I actually have that one ready, and it's just waiting for that day. So thanks again for watching, and see you in the next one. Take care.